Good morning. It's bright and early. It's like 6 a.m., something like that. I am going to try to get ahead of the heat of the day and get some flowers harvested. Um, we've been having some very unusual temperatures for us here in Northern Alberta. Usually we don't deal with such high temperatures, um, but lately we have been. So we've definitely noticed a few things in the garden that have kind of been struggling and and uh, so I'm wanting to get ahead of the game so I can do my delivery to my florist and probably do some garden harvest so I can start food preservation today and why not here's some strange sounds the buffalo are kind of making some noise in the background they're running through the bush and kind of doing their thing and uh, the roosters are crowing but we'll see what we got here to harvest I see that we have a lot of theatros to harvest today um, and just a few odds and ends so let's see what we got I should probably show you the buffalo because it's kind of pretty right now. Just a sec. If you've been following me on some of my other social media platforms, Elby was missing, but she finally got home. Sunflowers are in full bloom around here. I am letting some go to seed. I'm using this as feed for the birds and um, some of it I will be harvesting for reseeding for next year. It just exploded with flowers here the past week. I had a lot of video to share with you. Try to get through this neglected jungle. I was informed by one of our viewers. My garden is extremely neglected and um, whatnot. 
some more cut flowers ready to harvest today. Um, I've been doing really well with this farm. Um, it's been producing very heavily and I've been harvesting very heavily, trying to not damage my soil by doing too much cultivating or tilling. And it's been really a wonderful journey this year. My goal was set out to, in like I made this investment on this building. Like I bought a nursery basically um, to use as a cut flower farm. And uh, basically my goal was to earn enough to pay for it the first year and I'm almost there. So I've done enough in my cut flower sales that I'm super close to being able to officially say that it has earned back 100% of the investment. Um, so close. So that should be my, my goal should be reached by the end of the season. But check this out. Our first dahlia. So pretty. This one I planted really, really late in the ground the ones inside i have some issues i'll show you but um i'm pretty happy with that even though it doesn't look it's got some little nibbles on it it's still really really pretty first one we have some of the teddy bear sunflowers are starting to head up the amaranth i've been harvesting very heavily and uh whatnot so we do have some really pretty development here going on with the seed heads this is the um this is the coral fountain variety of amaranth this is the burgundy amaranth and then i also have some green tails over here which i've been harvesting small um for to use as a filler for my florists um as well as like a texture like a feature so sometimes we'll strip the leaves and then just leave the seed heads on all of them so I just cut this all completely back and it's already flushed in again so it doesn't look like it's a massive patch but it's enough to satisfy two florists right now and that's all I need so and then we're finally getting some cute little zinnias and doing my wiggle test this one's ready to harvest today this one is wiggly wiggly so this one needs more time this one's ready to harvest. It's got a stiff neck. So I'll be harvesting those for my florists today. I have lots of Cosmos to, or yeah, those are Apricotta Cosmos. I'll be harvesting a bunch of those as filler today and um, whatnot. My asters and the asters, the snapdragons, and what else was it? Oh, the Bells of Ireland. I'm not harvesting any more of those things because they've been overtaken by disease. My, <laughs> my weeds overtook my zinnias. This is like an awful spot to be planting zinnias. But whatever it is, this is real life. So um, farming ain't for... Um, it's not... When you're flower farming, it's not a not always a show-stopping experience so I do notice that some of these have some bug damage on them but for the most part look at how pretty they are love them we've been getting heat so that's what they like they like it a lot these guys are struggling a bit but hopefully we'll get a flush of them soon this has been really heavily harvested I had took multiple videos of the harvest and how much I took. Like I filled my entire vehicle up. Um, I had like almost a thousand dollars in just Lysianthus that I harvested and was delivering to my places. And I had all that video done for you guys. But so last or this past week, we took a very much needed family vacation. I've been growing. I've been growing since January 1st and I haven't had a day off. So we decided to take three days away and go on a vacation. And my family, 
Our idea of relaxation and rest is not laying on a beach. We decided to go whitewater jet boating. <laughs> um, husband's idea. Anyway, I lost all my footage in some whitewater rapids. Um, I lost everything because my phone and everything, it, it just went kerplunk. Um, in some whitewater rapids called the Devil's Elbow on the North Saskatchewan River. So, yeah, um, a vlog and a week's worth of B-roll and harvest and video for you guys was lost. So, that's okay. I needed a break. <laughs> it was it was a much needed break. So, I can't show you all the stuff that I had recorded because I was using my phone to um, do a lot of the recording and do a lot of the editing um, because it's easier for me to use the phone to upload into the YouTube because of our internet situation out here. We don't have very good internet, so it was just easier for me to do that and um, cost me, cost me a lot of work. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what is left here um, with some of what's blooming still. And I'm gonna show you something that I'm experiencing as an issue with my Lysianthus. So this is, we, I've harvested pretty much all of the Lysianthus, the blue and the white, or the purple and the white. The ones that are last to bloom are these absolutely gorgeous ABC rose. Look at those. I cannot get over how gorgeous they are. And they last like three weeks in a vase. They are so amazing. Absolutely in love with this flower. I have quite a bit of the rose to harvest today, but I harvested the white and the purple for a wedding, actually two weddings um, this past week. And so they all went, this whole patch, and then there's a bunch over there that were harvested for the weddings as well. Absolutely stunning. However, I wanted to show you an issue I'm having with the um, ABC varieties, they do this and then they do this. So what I've learned is if I can cut them at this stage and I can put them into some bleach, um, like give them a bleach treatment, they will stand up and perk up and hydrate. So what I think I'm, I, I don't know what is, what is going on with these. I can't really find any clear information. Um, but I am having an issue with the ABC series. The, those are flares and they're not doing it at all. They don't, they don't have this issue. It's just this variety and it happened with the white ones and it happened with the pink ones that this is going on. So if you know what this is, is causing this, like see this one's starting to, this color, there's another one there. Like they're getting, they're getting good water. They've been fed, they've been on the same programs and it's just this uh the abc series that is doing this not the flares just the abc so if you know what it is please let me know um look at that how stunning is that so here's some clips of what i was able to recover from my social media um this is these are photos that i had taken um, of some of the harvest that i had done and posted to social media before my phone was lost and I know this is going to come up and be asked about my, like, this is my first year flower farming, supplying two florists um, and growing my own food and preserving it. And so I know this is going to come up as a question, how much did I pay for this if I'm already almost paid for um, with the amount I've harvested it and stuff. The greenhouse, the whole system that I bought when I, when I bought it last fall in November, I paid $9,000 for everything. And um, I'm almost at that threshold where I have, it has earned its money back just in the cut flowers that I've been growing and selling. So I've done pretty well considering I had to, I've learned so much and I've had a lot of failures I've lost. It's probably closer to 70% crop failure, partly due to just overwhelming, um, amount of work to do and also 
uh, weather, we had lots and lots and lots of flooding, and then we had lots of heat. We don't get these 30 degrees Celsius days very often, especially on weeks on end. So I'm having issues with um, disease and pests that I never had to deal with before. So it's a very big learning experience for me. An example is my potatoes, and I should actually just show you what's going on with them. It is a pretty walk over there, so. I just love the sunrise. It makes me happy. Okay, some of my potatoes are dying prematurely. They're not ready to do this. And the one next to it will be fine and it'll start to have some issues. And I started to look into it. I pulled some potatoes to see what's going on with them. Um, because they they shouldn't be at this stage yet. Some of them hadn't even flowered and they were dying. And so some potatoes I did notice they had nothing for potatoes under them. And some of them were really, really small. Um, what's going on is I have a fungus that is affecting them. Um, which is something that happens when there's a lot of heat. And the moisture level this year seems to really be perfect for what's going on. So this potato is soft. It is like squishy. And there, a lot of them are like that, like this one's mushy. They're rotting. Um, the potatoes are just not producing. This one is solid. There's like the odd one that's firm. Um, but for the most part, they are not, yeah, see, this is a rotten one, and they're small. They're just prematurely dying, and it's because it has a fungus that is making the potatoes um, soft. This one's good, it's firm, so that one I can use. Some of the potatoes are good and some of them are not and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull the ones that I know are dying back because of the fungus and I will probably can them or freeze them like process them and I'm gonna try to do that today I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it on video because I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do yet um, this is a learning thing for me, but I do know that it's a problem and I do know that it's something that I've never dealt with before. I think it probably could have been that I used my own potatoes from like my own seed potatoes and that's something that they say you shouldn't do. Um, I've always used, uh, not always, but I've often used my own seed potatoes and I always go through and pick the best ones, the more solid ones. And this year, maybe it was just my year that I wasn't paying enough attention and I planted bad ones I'm not sure but it's definitely a learning experience for me that this heat definitely did something to the potatoes that I've never experienced before so this is new and if you do live in a warmer climate than I do and you deal with heat that is you know 30 degrees celsius and hotter um, like we've been seeing here lately please let me know what you do um, to, to prevent this from happening because I do know just from talking to people and the research I've done that this usually will only happen with those extreme periods of heat. Um, th that's only time that it's ever really shown up in our area. So I don't know for sure because like I said, I haven't done this before. This is so new, I'm learning. Um, but if you do know, please do let me know in the comments below and let me know what I'm doing wrong or how I could prevent this from happening. And also, maybe someone else watching might learn from what you have to say. So please do share your wisdom with them and uh, help us in our little community here um, learn from each other. These here are some of the sunflowers for my late summer harvest for my florists. I'm going to be doing another planting of those very, very, very soon. Um, I do have another planting going in here. Of, I did plant zinnias and sunflowers in here 
it didn't come up. So I'm going to be doing another reseed. Hopefully we'll get something growing here um, so that we can get them established and I can have some really nice harvest here in the coming days. The ground cherries are doing really well. I'm not gonna rummage through there right yet. <laughs> Too early in the morning for me to do that. But I did have some hanging baskets here of different things. These are a cucumber that I planted. They're a greenhouse variety of cucumber. They will do well in boxes like, like containers. And they are a seedless. So they don't need pollination and they are designed to be grown um, in the winter months inside of a greenhouse. So the variety is uh, Roxanette. I think is how you say it. So that's what that is. I got them from West Coast Seed. These guys are germinated as well. This is some carrots, which is cool because I wanted to try them. They're like mini carrots over here. I have some Kajari melons as an experiment. We're just winging some stuff here and just seeing how far we can push the envelope. These are le me uh, melons. Since I'm gonna be growing here um, inside this greenhouse and it gets really, really hot, even quite late into the fall, um, I think they will do okay. Over here, I have some joy choy. So this is some bok choy, baby bok choy is what I'll be harvesting out of that. Over here, I have some pak choy, same thing. These get bigger than those ones. I'll be harvesting those like smaller green size for stir fries and soups and salads. These guys are beets. So we'll see how that goes because I can't grow beets for the life of me. We have a low boron. We have boron deficiencies here. These are also beets. I have golden and like a red kind of thing. And in here we have some butter crunch which is doing really well. And some spread neck lettuce as well. That's doing really well. Do I need to water? No, we're good. I need to plant that today. I haven't done it yet. This is a squash. These are sweet potatoes as an experiment from slips I grew from potatoes I got at the store, which they're not gonna do anything. I already know that, but it's fun to try. And this is a dahlia, a floral dahlia that is really, really taking its sweet time and the bugs are starting to bother it. So it's not very happy. It's starting to turn yellow. Um, that's just part of my garden neglection, I guess, of not being able to grow anything, as some of our viewers would say. So over here I have some watermelon experiments going on, just something fun for Chaz. I do have some black spot and some fungal issues. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I've probably made is having these baskets over top of the dahlias because the dahlias have some disease. Um, they have common, they have common disease or fungal issues. So I'm basically, all of these tubers are going to be garbage. I'm not going to be able to grow them next year because they have been exposed to what, um, to this fungus that creates a lot of issues with these plants, the diseases and stuff. So it's another cucumber. This cucumber really produced well in this hanging basket. Pretty much every day there's one or two of these, which is great for snacking. For, you know, that this is what this is about, is just kind of having things that you can pick off of. This cantaloupe is doing okay. It's not gonna get very big, but that's okay. It's an experiment and something fun for the kids to do. Stuff like that. We have the mushroom mulch here, um, I noticed that some of the dahlias are doing a little bit better, but I do have some serious conflicts with all that. I do have some volunteer tomatoes that have popped up and I haven't really weeded them out. I'm just kind of winging it and seeing what's going on. I have some weeding to do today here. I'm going to rip this stuff out. Um, I did reseed or did seed some things in here. I have Orlea and Ami. And the ami is sort of coming up, but it's not, it didn't get the proper cold stratification. So I'll probably seed something else in here. And then in the spring, that stuff will probably come up once it has its cold stratification period. 
This stuff I'm gonna rip out because it's been harvested and it's done so I can plant something in its place. And over here I have a volunteer tomato coming up with some verbena and um, what else is in there? Forget-me-nots. There's forget-me-nots in there. The asters, these guys have been hit really hard with the grasshoppers spreading asters yellows. So I am gonna be pulling them out, but look at this little bloom. Isn't she lovely? And this one, such a darling. I do have some flowering kale planted in here and it's doing okay. I'm gonna to try to protect it from the bugs. And my peppers, they're trying to produce in here. Um, we're getting some heat finally, they're little, but this is a volunteer amaranth eucalyptus. I've been harvesting out of here. I have some outside as well. Um, but yeah, I don't have nothing growing in there where the zinnias are. The cats and chickens got in here. So I think that's partly why. But all this stuff is, I'm working on pulling this stuff out and whatnot. Oh, I see a horse walking by. <laughs> uh, there's horses out there. It's hard to see them, but they're there. Anyway, this stuff is all coming out. The zinnias I'm going to leave here because they're just starting to get head up and um, whatnot. But the grasshoppers really hit them hard and they have are showing some disease. But I'm hoping they will rebound just to have a few more stems in here later in the fall. But this stuff is all going to get pulled out. I'm probably going to put some brassicas along here um, once I get the soil re-amended and get the mulch finished and whatnot. I do have a few more of these guys growing in here. These are the uh, flare variety of Lysianthus. And, or no, these are ABC, ABC white, sorry. They're not the flare, they're ABC white. And there's a bug on it. Um, there's just a couple left and I've been holding off at ripping this all out because of these. And I need, a, I need to kind of give the soil a bit of a amendment and whatnot so I haven't really I haven't disturbed the soil there's clover in here so one of the things that I do like to do and it drives people insane when they watch my videos basically what I like to do is I like to keep as much of the microbiome in the soil intact as I possibly can and not rip out those big root systems especially ones that are helpers at building my soil of the nitrogen it produces but also because of the microbiome that is associated like the fungi and all the different microorganisms that um, are associated with the clover it's actually can be very beneficial and that's one of the reasons why I keep um, the clover in place sometimes I don't rip it all out because it is more beneficial than it would be to rip it out in many cases. And so I know it drives people crazy and it's really frustrating to people to see certain things look weedy or messy, but the reality of it is, is I'm farming um, and it's not, I don't live, I'm not making curb appeal. So this is how I'm, I'm doing my gardening um, is I'm trying to create healthy soil and healthy plants without using chemicals. I've grown three three turnovers of crops in this structure already and on this farm. I've been growing since January 1st. In zone two, I have a 100 day grow season and I've been growing since January. And, and I mean, hey, we're almost at the end of August. So clearly a lot of these plants that I've been growing in here, they've done really, really well with the method that I've done. I've harvested a lot of flowers off of them. Um, there's been thousands of dollars worth of flowers been harvested out of here. There's been hundreds of pounds of food been brought out of here. So clearly this method that I'm doing is working for me. If it doesn't work for someone else, that's fine. Go weed your own garden and leave mine out of it. One thing I was gonna point out is that 
these tomatoes have been growing in this greenhouse since since April 18th they were planted these guys went into this greenhouse pretty crazy they're not sick or anything they're really healthy there is we did lose some blooms when it got really really hot but they're doing really well and I found the best success with this is how I've been doing it and I'll show you I'll show you what I got going on so here's the row of tomatoes but behind the tomatoes I have celery growing now the celery is growing as one, it's kind of a mulch, a living mulch along the sidewall, but it's also, it's wicking up any excess moisture we have from the outside that's coming in. So then it's kind of creating a, a guard so that the tomatoes are not getting overwatered. Since the drainage does come into here from the outside, it's been working very well for me and they're thriving. They're not getting too much water there. I don't have much splitting and they're just doing really, really well. I've made so much food based on what I've harvested just off of these few plants here. Um, they're doing really, really well. So I'm very, very happy with them. And this soil was not very good soil to start with. I had done a lot of um, amending when I planted them. And I think I shared that on some of the social media and whatnot of what I did. So I'm really happy with that. These guys, these peppers here, they're getting overtaken by some of my other plants, but yeah, these are little snowball peppers, I think is what they're called. Really cute. We've harvested a few of them. They're really tasty. They're different than like the regular green peppers, but I like them. I would definitely grow them again. And yeah, the tomatillos are doing really well in here. Um, I've harvested and made a batch of salsa verde. The ground cherries we've been kind of harvesting. I haven't harvested them in a few days, but I should. And another volunteer, um, amaranth. Look at this. This is a green tails. I just use it as a filler flower for my florist, so I'm happy to have that growing here for the fall. And these are my hibiscus. These are the, um, the um, mahogany splendor hibiscus. I have four plants for the fall. They're just really not thriving. I'm not sure what I need to do to make them grow faster. I think they need some nitrogen. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna feed them here today and whatnot. This uh, spinach, I've had two harvests off of it. You see me harvest in my last vlog. Um, I did a harvest off of it and then I did another one since then and it's bolted since we had some of this really bad um, heat. So I'm gonna rip it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a rest probably amend the soil and then I'm gonna plant it in a couple weeks so I have a fall crop um, of, of that. And then there's some lettuce growing here and I have some bok choy, it's growing here. Um, these are kohlrabi. So I'm really happy with what's kind of been growing here and what's been going on. I'm hoping that the bug pressure stays off of them and I can cover them if I have to and grow them into some cold temperatures really happy with that it gave me a nice little harvest my peas and cucumbers are finally done I'm gonna pull these out oh I see another cucumber I missed it holy to moly <laughs> they're still producing they look like really awful but they're still producing food but I am gonna rip these guys out and I will be amending this soil and I'll be planting spinach for my fall harvest. And then look at how gorgeous these guys are. These are status. I've been really enjoying having the status and the lysianthus together. There's clover growing in here. I won't show it because I don't want to trigger any professional gardeners that might be watching my channel. <laughs> um, keep, the, keep, the, keep the content coming without ticking someone off might or triggering somebody's gardening skills is just impossible so don't care but anyway look at how gorgeous this is <laughs> so pretty I love the, the combination of the two I just love it so much beautiful I'm, I'm definitely loving having the status here is much easier for me to harvest just lovely The Lysianthus, they are much shorter than the status, so that's a lesson learned. These varieties just didn't get as the height that I was expecting them to. Wow. So pretty.
the bloom hanging. The glad bed is finally blooming, as are the glads over here. Don't they remind you of, like these to me, they look like um, pansies, the same color as pansy. That's what they remind me of. Such a gorgeous flower. Oh, look at them. Lovely. I harvested all of these Lysianthus. There's a few stragglers, but all that footage is at the bottom of Devil's Elbow. I'm so, so sorry, you guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and kind of do a few of my little morning chores. I hope that you're having a wonderful day and you're having a great growing season wherever you are. Let me know in the comments below, what are you harvesting today from your garden? Thank you so much for being here. Much love and uh, we'll catch you next time. By the way, check out some of these clips from our vacation that we took today or this week and some of the beautiful places that we were able to visit and have lunch together as a family because we are an adventurous bunch. Anyway. Bye for now, take care. So on our vacation, we went white water jet boating and these are some baby rapids on this river. This is actually one of the videos that um, managed to make it to the cloud before my phone went ker plunk into some four foot rapids. That's okay, it's beautiful and I, I have the memories anyway, but um, this was the North Saskatchewan River. We boated from Rocky Mountain House to Saunders Campground and just a little bit past the campground. And this is the view we had for lunch. We stopped here for lunch and to fuel up um, and make our way back to Rocky Mountain House. Um, this river is absolutely gorgeous. It's coming from the Bighorn Dam. Um, this is Rocky Mountain water. This is Drayton Valley boat launch. This is, I didn't know this. This is a checkpoint for the amazing race um, at the Eagle Point Provincial Park. So that was really, really neat to learn that. Um, we, we went to a lot of places on this river, in including Devon, where we discovered they have a nude beach. Chaz was thrilled. We got home to find this beautiful surprise, the wine cap mushrooms. Oh, I was so excited when I seen this, you guys. They bloomed and they're thriving. I've had a couple harvests off of the wine cap mushrooms. And what I did is I um, freeze dried a lot of them and I've been cooking with them. So I made a meal with them and freeze dried them in little cubes and it's been working really, really well. Some of the larger ones, the stems did get woody, but I did freeze dry them up, dry them up and um, ground them in a powder and they're working really, really great for sauces and soup. So I'm super happy with this. If you missed the video of me planting these wine caps, um, please check the description below and I will link it down there for you. But I learned about these from Becky at Acre Homestead and I'm so grateful because this is a really wonderful addition to the garden and I highly recommend. They're a really nice mushroom. They're very mild, but they are a very nice mushroom. So yeah, I, I cannot be happier. The mulch that they are creating, the compost that they're creating is really beautiful. So pleased. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for sticking around with me for these last 42 minutes. So much appreciate you. Take care. Bye for now. Much love. I almost forgot. There's one more thing to update you about this week. We discovered that we had two more nests of guinea fowl eggs and they hatched. So we have 20 more itty bitty guinea fowl babies. Um, you've seen a clip earlier in this vlog of some of the older guinea fowl. Those were the ones that were hatched earlier. There was 11 um, hatched. There were 10 surviving, so there's quite a few of them. And there is 20 of these teeny tiny little things. 
They are so adorable, but don't let them little small things fool you. They go completely crazy over bugs. And I can assure you our tarnished plant bug issue is gone. They are good little hunters.